R. Kelly, the Pied Piper of R&B. I mean, it's R. Kelly. I Believe I Can Fly, song as old as I am. I was in high school when that came out. Um, R. Kelly allegedly has a sex cult uh, in which women, young women, girls in college, um, are forced into a, a polymorous sexual uh, relationship with R. Kelly, and they can't escape. This is according to one of the girls that's been missing. Um, her family has not been able to get up with her for months, and they went to the press, and they went to the media, they went to the police, and they let them know that their daughter is being held against her will by uh, Robert Kelly. Robert, R. R. Kelly has had a long problem uh, of sexual deviancy, and that's putting it nicely, right? Um, R. Kelly, I never will forget an interview that R. Kelly did with Ture, when Ture just straightforward asked him, looked him in the face, and said, do you like teenage girls? And R. Kelly hesitated and paused, and instead of saying, no, I don't like teenage girls, he paused and said, by, 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 uh, by um, teenagers, how, how are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean, how old are we talking about? And Teray's face, if you go look at that clip, it's amazing. Teray's face was like, um, I'm talking about teenagers. It's literally only two ages of teenagers that keeps you from being uh, considered a sex offender, and that's 18 and 19. So what do you mean, what age are we talking about? I mean, and I, for one, would argue that Messi being a grown man, damn near 50 years old, talking about you're interested in an 18-year-old and a 19-year-old girl, damn the fact that the law says it's okay, something's wrong with you. But go look at the interview yourself. Uh, one of the most interesting dynamics about R. Kelly, I'm going to get to the... Uh, uh, the most interesting thing about uh, the interview last night with one of the women who were, um, who is, I believe, being held against her will. Uh, but one of the interesting things about R. Kelly is the amount of support that he still gets from the black community and, and some white people, but primarily from the black community uh, because we don't have much. I think that's the best way to explain it. You know, black, we don't have much that we could hold on to. And it seems like every time we get somebody, you know, and no, I'm not making an excuse. I'm trying to help you understand the psychopathy, right? I'm trying to help you understand why people would defend a person like R. Kelly when we should be abandoning a person like R. Kelly. I mean, hell, how old was Aaliyah when he messed with her, when he married her? 14, 13, something ridiculous. But anyway, in the black community, we, we don't have much. We don't have many heroes that have not been snatched away from us, that have not been vilified. And so it becomes a knee-jerk reaction. It almost becomes like uh, a trigger. Uh, it becomes a trigger when we see the media attacking anyone from the black community. And we're more likely to uh, defend them even when they're wrong because we've seen the uh, we've seen this systemic injustices where they will make someone wrong who was actually right. In other words, we would defend people like OJ even though, yeah, okay, yeah, right. We would defend somebody like OJ because of all the times where the system destroyed people who were innocent. It's like a it's like a it's a. Uh, it, it's a trigger. It's quite literally a trigger. We're quick to defend. And this is the, psycho the psychosis. But at some point, we've got to realize how damaging that thought process is to our community because we've allowed a person like R. Kelly, who should have been excommunicated from the black community a long time ago. As a matter of fact, there's people who are going to be agreeing with me and still got R. Kelly in their playlist. But we've let it go so far to where now he's not just messing with one 13-year-old or 14-year-old or 15-year-old or 16-year-old or whatever the allegedly their age, these ages are, you know. It's a whole cult. And so last night, um, 
Last night, uh, one of the individuals who was supposedly uh, and allegedly, right, allegedly being held against her will, did an interview, I believe it was with TMZ, and in the interview, she said that she's not being held against her will. She's there of her own volition. She wants to be there. And then he started asking her some more pointed question, as in, um, you know, can you talk about where you are? And she started saying, no, uh, I don't want to discuss that. And, and she didn't really use the phrasing that well. Um, it was interesting, the, the verbiage that she picked. Uh, but you can listen to it and decide for yourself. Uh, but then he asked her the specific question, are you living with other girls and are you free to go? And if you look at it, if you look at her and you look around her chest area, you can see a shadow about yay high, about the height of R. Kelly, shaped in the watermelon head style of R. Kelly. And you see him in the background doing this. And then once you see him do that, she says, I don't, want, uh, I don't want to talk about that at this time. I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's, a, that's a cry for distress. That's a distress call. I, 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 mean, we, I mean, R. Kelly, you know, rich and famous, whatever. These are still human lives. And so long as the black community keeps giving this man cover, so long as people who are making money off of him still gives him cover, it's not just the black community, it's the record labels who are still making money off of him. As long as they still give him cover and he's still getting these checks, he's going to be free to uh, be a predator in our communities. I wasn't sure. I was listening to her. She was almost convincing. She actually did convince me. I was like, well, okay, well, maybe, maybe she's not being held against her will. But you look at her shirt and you see R. Kelly's tall Bama ass. I mean, that, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words there. And I'm sorry for the audience that's listening via radio. You can't see my hand gestures. The hand gestures that I'm doing is someone, you know, cutting someone off, you know, cutting at the throat, telling them to stop or don't say nothing. That's what you can see in the video, clear as day, when you uh, watch this interview. So R. Kelly was in the background coaching her. Uh, coaching her is putting it nicely. And so because of that, uh, it's, it does suggest to me that she's not there completely of her own will. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some, some, you know, some people very well, listen, some people very well may choose happily to get into that type of relationship with a person like R. Kelly. It's not beyond the realm of possibilities. But once you see that, once you see that she is being controlled in the moment by she's like 21, R. Kelly's like 82, See R. Kelly, seeing this woman being uh, manipulated by a grown-ass man. You have to take in consideration the fact that perhaps she's just saying that because that's the situation that she's in.